Next on Comcast Newsmakers, is the state's supplemental operating budget a go and the transportation package a no? We'll hear from the House Minority Leader coming up. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Sabrina Register. Today we are in Olympia, the beautiful state reception room at the Capitol. Joining me right now, Representative Dan Christensen, who represents District 39, I believe. 39, that's correct. So nice to see you. Thanks so much you for coming bet. on the Thank program. you for having me here. The state's supplemental operating yes. budget. First of all, tell us a, a little bit about it for those of us who sure. aren't, aren't up to speed on it. Well, last year we actually passed the regular budget which is the big 30 plus billion dollar budget. A supplemental budget is kind of the opportunity for us as legislators to maybe tweak things a little bit if the if let's say the economy has changed or maybe we maybe inadvertently we made some mistakes in legislation last year. Supplemental year is for us to kind of tweak the budget, maybe fix some mistakes, you know, the shall to may will to can things that we may have to do in pieces of legislation, but it's it's more a time for us to fix the the potential problems that that have arisen since last year. Winding down the regular session right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. are you seeing support for this supplemental operating budget? Well, my goal is, you know, last year during the regular budget, for the first time in more than a quarter century, we actually had the largest bipartisan vote in favor of a, of a budget that we'd seen. My hope is, is that the supplemental budget will be very similar to that. While I'm sure there'll be some no's just because that's we're in the legislature, uh, I do believe, though, we're getting very close to having something that, you know, most of the people down here in Olympia can actually support. Let's switch gears because it's a much different story on the transportation package. There's a there's a lot of division there. Yes. Uh, what what are the big stumbling blocks there? Well, let's back up a little bit because I, I don't think that there's anybody here in Olympia that doesn't agree that transportation isn't a very key part of how the state operates, how our economy must you know our economy is kind of built around. Uh, transportation when it comes to getting goods and services out there to the public. We've got some major ports in Washington State. We've got some big, big challenges when it comes to transportation. I think everybody down here acknowledges that. You know, but I will say this, for as much uh, maybe flack that the public has or that the press has taken when it comes to maybe not sharing the whole story on issues, boy, they've done a tremendous job on talking to us about the problems with our transportation system over the last <laughs> couple of years. Because of that, I think, and some other challenges we're dealing with, I think that we're at a time right now where the public is probably so well informed as to some of the challenges that we're facing in, in transportation and maybe some of the problems that need to be fixed, that it's put a lot of pressure on legislators that may have otherwise voted for uh, revenue packages or tax packages for transportation. It's made it a lot more challenging for them because their constituents, many of which are in big cities, are saying, wait a minute, there are some big problems we're hearing about. Maybe we need to fix this transportation system before we continue to fund this transportation system. So Republicans uh, at first said no to the, the gas tax increase, right. correct? And then came back and said something like 11 and a half cents is what they could live with? Well, Is that had, correct? Yeah, there was a there was actually a transportation package that passed out of the House with only one Republican vote last year. There was a Senate package that has an 11 and a half. Now I'm seeing one that's 11 three quarter cents per gallon gas package. It'll be phased in over the next several years. Um, probably a little bit more bipartisan support on that version of it. But what we're really getting down to is some of the, what I call the reforms of transportation. Are we going to continue to be the most expensive place in the country to build anything transportation related? Are we going to continue to spend an average of about 60 cents out of every dollar before we actually even break down or break ground on a project? And how many years before is it going to take to get these projects done? We had a bridge collapse on Interstate 5 up in Skagit County, and we were able to get that bridge up and running replace an interstate bridge in just several months. We average about 10 years from conception to building anything in Washington State transportation related on these big projects. And we've got to, we've got to change how we do transportation in Washington State. We're almost out of time, but it sounds like you and other Republicans don't agree with that portion of the transportation package, the cost of it. I would say that it's it's more than just Republicans today. You know, as I've talked to many of my good colleagues that, you know, across the aisle on the Democrat side of the aisle, many of them have very similar concerns as we do to this. So, and so I would have to say that it's probably one of the more bipartisan oppositions I'm seeing as well. And I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Okay. And thanks Thank for you. watching Comcast Newsmakers.